our fifth contestant, Mariana Pascal, local English or standard English. Local English or standard English, Mariana Pascal. Well, many years ago, my daughter, who is half Chinese, attended a local kindergarten in Johar Baru. And I remember one day I went to pick her up, and she came running up to me, and she said, Mommy, what's this? I said, I don't know. Ask your teacher. She turned and she said, Teacher, it's what, ah? Huh? <laughs> I said, what did you say? She said, oh, Mommy, that's Malaysian English. <laughs> My fellow Toastmasters, we hear a lot these days about local varieties of English. Should we embrace them as a part of the culture? Or should we eliminate them and replace them with standard English? What do you think? Embrace or replace? Embrace. Yes, I love the local English here. It is the most colorful English in the world. <laughs> I especially love your crazy two-word phrases, where got. <laughs> also can, see first, see how. It's so unique. And frankly speaking, I do not think that it is possible to eliminate local English because linguistic habits are very difficult to break. Am I right? Yes. Now, throughout my entire marriage, my Chinese husband has been saying, get down from the car. And I've been saying, honey, we're not on the car, so we can't get down. We're in the car, we get out. And he says, oh, yeah. okay, get down. <laughs> Can't change. In fact, I was in a taxi the other day, and the taxi driver said to me, okay, miss, you get down here, huh? I said, no, 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 no. You get out here. He said, it's my taxi, you get out. <laughs> I think the important thing is that whatever English we speak, Malaysian English, Canadian English, Indonesian English, Bruneian English, that these days we be understood by people from other cultures. Am I right? Yes. I have to tell you, sometimes your local English is a little bit difficult for foreigners to understand. <laughs> I will give you an example. Now, when I first came to Malaysia, I went to a teacher's conference in KL. And at the end of the day, I said to a local teacher, I said, um, excuse me, I'd like to go back to the hotel now. Do you know where I might find a taxi? And she said, never mind, never mind. You follow me. I said, well, I, I, I don't have a car, so I can't follow you. Uh, do you know where I can find a taxi? She said, never mind, never mind, you follow me. <laughs> I said to my friend, she wants me to follow her. Should I run behind her car? <laughs> You see, it would have been helpful if she had used a more standard phrase like, I'll give you a ride. <laughs> I'll give you another example of how local English can be very difficult for foreigners. Now, my British friend Jolene came to Malaysia to work in a restaurant. And on her very first day, the manager asked her to make fruit juice. So he gave her some fruit, and he gave her a blender. And he said, you put in fruit after you switch on. <laughs> uh, excuse me, uh, I put in the fruit after I switch it on. He said, you put in fruit after you switch on. <laughs> so she switched it on put in the fruit, what happened? All the fruit came out. He said, I, uh, I told you, you put in fruit after you switch on. <laughs> See, she had heard, she had heard this, right? It would have been a little clearer if he had said, put in the fruit, after that, you switch it on. You see, sometimes one single word can change the whole meaning, right? 
I remember when my husband and I were first falling in love. I remember this one evening that was so romantic. Now, my husband's English was not very good at that time. And this was the night he was going to propose. We were dancing. It was so romantic. We just looked at each other. And he said in the most gentle voice, How many eyes do I have? I felt like an alien. It was not romantic. There was no proposal that night. Hello, okay. hello. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. I thought that video was longer. I gotta check in with our speaker. I could have no, sworn that video I, was longer. Huh? It was longer, but I had to cut it off because it's 9 a.m. It's 9 p.m. <laughs> so oh, I gotta start I'm, the time. I'm right? gonna continue with it. I mean, it's fine. <laughs> I know, I know. But again, guys, that's a good video. I, I got inspired when I saw that video. I think about first time I saw the video was a few years back, man. Yep, yep, yep. You can uh, yeah. tell. And then, yeah from, yeah from the quality of the recording because that was probably the first ever mobile recording i don't know you know kind of thing <laughs> um anyway so um yeah welcome 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 we are so honored to have you guys here and that was basically the start of tonight because amin saw that video amin was like oh my god who is this woman she's amazing you know so he remembered her because that video went viral right i mean okay here's here's the how this whole thing started because uh remember about the, the few months back there was this uh, big fiasco about the oh did the it teacher, TV teacher. Went, yeah yeah and the TV, TV teacher, teacher, right? yeah, yeah. yeah yeah tell the story so i mean we, we we had like a, a, a few of our friends who get upset with stuff because the way Constant that. Let's just that way. yeah so we have like different different point of view different opinion about it and i was like hey, you know what maybe we should bring someone to come to our, our show and let's have a conversation about this right and I remember Mariana a few years mm -hmm. back. And what happened was, you know, the power of LinkedIn, you can just connect people from all over the world. And I, I saw that she was connected to, uh, to a friend of mine. And then after that, I told Nina, Nina, go. <laughs> and that's it. Everything just happened after that, right? So that we, exactly. we having to that. Yeah. And I was one of those very few Malaysians who never saw the video. So I, I'm just like, Nina, speaker, go. I'm like, okay. So my job is to stalk and stuff like that. And and when I found her, she wanted to meet me. And then um, I finally saw her video and I was so blown away. I was like, damn, we got to get this woman on. So that's basically what happened. And the whole point of that was a D-Date TV. And we want you Malaysians to, to, to embrace whatever level of language you have, because that's what makes us us. Okay, so welcome back. Okay. Welcome to Just Langa. This is our 52nd episode. So welcome, family. Uh, welcome, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook family. Welcome, Popcooners. You know? welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, if you are joining us for the first time, we're very grateful to have... Um, uh, yeah, is this my hand? Yeah, I'm in back because he was gone for two weeks. So I had like some really cute um, fill-ins um, who we didn't have a budget to do a photo shoot. So instead we put their head over Amin's body on the poster, but it worked out. They look really cute, you know, like chubby. Anyway, so welcome back, Amin. We're so happy to have you here, but let us know if um, if you guys have been tuning in, welcome, Angela. Hey, Abel, welcome for joining us. Um, that's probably wrong England, but it's okay. I've decided I'm not shy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, if you loved having uh, an Amin replacement or a future Nina replacement, let us know, you know, and we'll have more of that kind of differently. How did you feel, Amin? Because you were gone. You know what? This is what I feel. I think this whole idea of having a guest host works. So I think we're going to have more of those in the future. Okay, cool. Right. Awesome. And if you feel like you can be a host for Just Langa, you know what to do. You can PM me. And and after tonight, don't worry. We don't really care about your England or your whatever. Lah, as long as exactly. people understand you. okay? Because it's all about learning how to communicate and, and getting people to, as long as they understand you, that's fine. We love you anyway. Okay. So speaking of that, um, you know the drill. If you got hi Rahim, hi Abel, well, thank you for joining us. You know the drill. If you are here, this is not your first time. Type in popcorn if you're the regular. But if you're a newbie, let us know and say newbie. 
Okay, whether you're a pop coon or no coon, we welcome you, all right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and if you are tuning in for the first time, please let us know. Um, please give permission to stream yet so we can see your name. Otherwise, we'll see Facebook user <laughs> kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, now tonight's episode is, again, it's an epic one. We're covering the art of not caring what others think, even about your English, yeah? Now, mm -hmm. um, I absolutely agree with Amin. This topic I feel is so important, um, and 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 it's not just about speaking English. I think there's an even bigger thing behind, right? I mean, um, I mean, exactly. yeah. To be honest, I, I, why is it so hard to speak up? I mean, we're we're so good at what we do. We've got ideas to share, but why is it when it comes to saying what we think, we keep quiet? You know. Yeah. And I, yeah. I personally feel that this is deeper than English. This is this is something else. This yeah. is something else. Yeah. This is something I, else. I so we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna code it everything tonight, right? That's what we're gonna do. Tonight. Yeah. We're gonna dig deep, you know, kind of thing. Deep. And and if there's anything that's gonna shift tonight, is this conversation for the whole of Malaysia, or at least the start of it. Okay. So make sure, um, you know. So tonight, by the end of the show, um, you know, even if you have a low level of English. Uh, we would like you to know that you can speak confidently in any situations and maybe it's just a mindset, an effective mindset shift. You yep. know what I mean? Yeah. So exactly. all this is happening right now hap uh, and so much more in just Langa. So if you think this is going to be useful for you or for your friends, for your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, or whatever, lah, your, your employee, share please share, share this up. show. Yeah. Share it. Tag anybody, tag everybody, share it out on your feed yeah. so that it makes a difference to the people who are watching. Okay, you know this is a big deal. Just to share with you, a lot of our work at Popcorn and we deal with grooming business influencers, it's to do with holding ourselves back to speak up. Okay, so this is a, an important thing. Okay, so do it right now. Tag everyone. Let's make a difference. Yeah. So what about yeah. you guys who are tuning in? What are you excited to learn about tonight? Let us know in the comment section. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Okay. Right. Now, speaking of learning, uh, we don't have a lot of time. So I want to share quickly what's happening in the popcorn universe. Maybe Mariana will join us. I don't know. Um, so yeah, if this is your first time tuning into popcorn, we don't just have a weekly Thursday show called Just Langa. But every uh -huh. Monday, we also have another Facebook group called, um, what is the Facebook group called? Yeah, Authority on LinkedIn, <laughs> where we build yeah. Southeast Asia's <laughs> business influencers. And um, yeah, we go live there every Monday and we teach people how to build your authority and a profitable business on LinkedIn. So if this is something yeah. that interests you, we have a couple of private classes coming up, which we want to share with you. So on 1st May, Saturday, we've got a private Zoom today. class this Saturday. This Saturday, this Saturday. Yes. It is Labor Day, but hey, guys, we're working just for you so you guys can learn how to use LinkedIn to get clients. Okay, 10 a.m., 11.30 a.m., it's free. I promise you it's going to be super impactful, so come and join us. And then mm -hmm. the following Saturday on 8th May, we've got Popcorn Bites featuring Samantha Tang, who's going to be sharing how to elevate your business game with Google My Business. Okay, she's the chapter lead okay. of Google business group or gbg and women will penang so this should be really interesting um so uh -huh. please make sure you sign up popcorn bot is probably going to be putting all the links to the yes. private um zoom trainings and then you can sign up okay i'm going to add something to this i'm going to oh, add yes, something please. to this uh, mm -hmm. popcorn bite is actually an activity where we invite our graduate student to come back and to contribute back to our community members. So usually once a month, what we do is that we'll get our students to come back and share valuable information uh, in the areas of their own expertise. So this is yeah. something interesting, guys, because Samantha is awesome when it comes to Google. Uh, business Everything Google. Google. Yeah, Google. Anything yeah, Google. You want to talk to and, and if you are cheapskate like us, Google really help us because we use everything <laughs> free. Okay, so this is one of the best ways to do it. So definitely uh -huh. sign up; it's free. Uh, places are limited because we only have a hundred seats, right? <laughs> because of the, yep. our software <laughs> license it's, on Zoom. <laughs> it's so make sure you sign up. 
Yeah, almost almost half signed up already. All right. Okay. Next cool. one. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Coming so that's right. what's happening. Um, also, in the month of May, usually we have uh, just Langa every month, but next month we're going to take a break. So uh, we'll see you in June. Okay. You guys can go, oh, you know, kind of thing. But, you know, we're still around. Just PM us. Let us know who you want. Um, we might be shifting certain things, but the main crux of it is still there. Okay. So that's what's happening in Pop Converse. But tonight we're about to speak. Uh, speak up for our England. Are you guys ready or not? Then that's just Langa with it. Intro right. video, I mean. Popcorn. Hey, you guys. I mean, it was my face. <laughs> what do you mean, what's your face? Hey, your face now. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay, welcome back, Popcorn Family. I'm Nina. And I'm I mean, Amin. And realize, welcome. I mean, you do realize there's a photo there instead of our, our video, right? Really? Yeah, it's a photo. No, no. Okay, oh, okay, thank cool. you. Okay. You hey, you guys, welcome <laughs> back. Um, I'm Nina, and this is. And I'm Amin. And I'm Amin. Welcome. Guy. Sorry, it happens once in a while. I've not. No, it's okay. I'll forgive remember. you because you just came back from surgery. Okay, so welcome to our fifty-second episode. He cannot see the button very far. Okay, fifty-second episode, season two, episode thirteen. Just longer, and no, I am not high on coke. I didn't have coke today. This is where we build Southeast Asia's business influences by building your authority, mm -hmm. impact, and income on social media. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, tonight, we are going to be talking about English and why even the smartest, most talented, and the best of us still have this huge fear of speaking out, which is why we got you, the expert who's going to tell us why. Okay, now, our guest tonight is the real deal. She's a big deal. For me, she is, you know. Um, she's watched by over 24 million people worldwide. She's an intercultural communications expert. She speaks about what's important in global communication. In fact, for 25 years, she's helped helped over 100 organizations to solve their cultural and language problems that prevent professionals from collaborating and influencing others. This is exactly what we want, right? I mean, yeah. And her, uh -huh. life, and her life's passion is to help Asians, that's us, in this highly competitive world to speak up, to show up, and to stand out so that they can achieve whatever goals um, they set their mind to. Now, her TED Talk, now this is why I say she's such a big deal, is one of the 70 most watched TEDx speakers in history, okay? She's one of the 14 finalists in the 2019 World Championship of Public Speaking. She's also voted one of the world's top 10 female speakers worldwide in 2019 by Toastmasters International. Now, she's the author of the English Fast and Easy book series, it's kind of like Fast and Furious, except it's English Fast and Easy, which has sold over 100,000 copies in just Malaysia and Singapore alone. She is intercultural communication specialist, Mariana Pascal. Okay. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining us. We were so honored when you said yes. We, I mean, it was like, ah! You know, kind of thing. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. I'm having such a good time already. We haven't even started. Oh, thank I'm you. I'm okay. reading the chats actually, and it's yes. really cool. I'm going through the chats, and I'm seeing there's a guy there on the chats, James Leong. I yes. just connected with him on LinkedIn like four minutes ago. So, hi, James yes. Leong. Oh, sorry, James Fung. Oh, it's so yes. interesting. We just we just connected like just a second ago. Nice. So there you go. Interesting. He might be inviting you to his show. So we've got Vivian, Samantha. These are our usual suspects. And we have a LinkedIn yeah. user who didn't give permission, so we don't know her name or his name. But never and mind. You've got well, so many bugs. Bugs. I want to know. Oh, yes. You know, I'm just trying to imagine if two parents, you know, they look at their newborn baby and they say, I think she looks like a bugs. <laughs> you know, yes. how, do, how does um, that make you feel about um, she's actually Angela. So Angela, you want to say hi? Yeah. She's hi, Angela. I, I, yeah. You know, from Angela to bugs. I, you know, we'll, mm. we'll, we'll have a we'll have a chat about that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Angela, maybe you want to explain how you, whether you know how how Mariana says that's how you got named bugs. You know, because your parents thought you were so cute. 
Okay, anyway, so um, so first things first, Mariana, can we quick, let's talk quickly about your you. Um, how did you end up in Malaysia, you know, um, and 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 you, you didn't plan on staying too long, did you? J just wondering, yeah. I did not. I came here by accident. I was on my way to, to Australia and I had a stopover here. And I sort of fell in love with Malaysia at first sight. I had kind of an a nightmare toilet experience my first day. <laughs> okay. Um, and and then I kind of fell in love with Malaysia very instantly. And I just it was one of those, you know that you know those love at first sight experiences where you they say I've never had love at first sight, but apparently you you meet somebody and you feel that you already know them. So I had that feeling when I came here, like I, my first day, I sort of felt, I know this country already. I feel like I've been here before, but I hadn't. I'd never been to Asia. And then I, I just never left. And then I married a Malaysian and, and um, now I have a oh, Malaysian wow. daughter and a very Malaysian life. It's 25 years. Wow. I, I wow. thought that you met a Malaysian overseas and then you married him and therefore you moved here. No, but you know, I met him here. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. And he was not him? my first Malaysian man. Sorry. Oh, okay. There you go. I, I, did, I had a boyfriend for many years here, actually. Many uh -huh. years. I'm not a floozy. Come on, don't accuse me. <laughs> did not. No stereotypes, please. <laughs> okay. Angela said it was her teeth when she was a kid before my years with braces. Okay, there you go. Oh wow, okay. I learned something about Angela tonight. Yeah, oh there God. you go. And and mm -hmm. Sam, uh, whose name is Munchie Tang on, on Facebook, but she's actually Samantha, says, welcome, Mariana. Thank you, yeah. Sam. Thank you. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Sam. Sam is everywhere. This is her on LinkedIn, and this is her on Facebook. She's like, and she's double welcoming you all. She really gets around this one. Ah, okay. And James is saying, wow, thanks for mentioning my name. I'm, I'm sure my talk show is too small to invite someone like her. Okay. Well, you got to, you got to try. Otherwise you won't know. I, right? I, I, I didn't know he has a talk show. I just, I just got a nice message from him. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And Jeff know. says, now I know. What do you know, Jeffrey? Huh? Tell us. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so, so that's how you ended up staying so long because you met not only one man, but a couple of men. And now you have a Malaysian daughter. Okay. Can you share with us how you got started as an intercultural communications expert? I mean, is there actually a degree in that in school? Because, you know, Malaysians, we were either told engineer, doctor, doctor lawyer, accountant. Yeah, no, we no, didn't no, have no. much choice. No. I mean, I came here 25 years ago, and I started out as a teacher here. And very, very quickly, I evolved that role into a more of a corporate trainer and an author on English books. But because I had a very local life, I also rented out rooms to Arabic students for 15 years. I've had a constant stream of Arabic students. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, in order to train, uh, in order to train Malaysians and other Asians in communication skills, I had to really do a lot of research into what the actual issue was. Was it in fact a language problem or was it something mm. else? And mm -hmm. through this research, I gained a tremendous amount of expertise and I'm, I'm very comfortable calling myself an expert in intercultural communication because I've spent 25 years studying it in great depth. And I think wow. that's why the te TEDx was so successful because of that, that um, the insights that really came from that kind of investigation. Yeah. So, so now, um, because you did this, are you like the only intercultural communication expert? Or are there lots of people? Because because I until I met you, I did not know this. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of people who are intercultural experts, who are experts in you know how to do business travel to different countries and how to understand the culture. relationship between cultures and the relationships within a culture. And then there are communication experts. Mm -hmm. But to have someone who's a combination of the two is not so usual. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but uh, it's much less usual. Of oh, wow. So that makes you extra mm -hmm. special. And we're very lucky because we got you. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank yep. you. I'm very lucky to be here. Yeah. OK, cool. Um, I mean, any questions on your part? OK. Um, how do you met your husband? I'm curious to know. <laughs> uh, do you I want mean, the official I answer or the real answer? The, the real answer. answer. The real answer. Can I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, the official answer? 
Yeah, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll give you the official answer and the real answer. The official, okay, I'll give you the real answer. The real answer is I was I was teaching in a language school. This uh -huh. is when I very, when I early on, right? My, about my third year here, I was teaching in a language school and I was doing a lot of classes to businesses and, uh, you know, night, you know, working people. And, and he was working in Singapore and he wanted to improve his English. He didn't have any kind of formal education whatsoever, no education. And he just knew that he had to be comfortable with English. So he signed up for English classes and we became friends. And, um, you know, one thing led to another. There you go. It was, uh, evolved over a while. You, you know, did wasn't it. Anything. You still did it. <laughs> it's okay. Probably night student. After. Night student. He was also a working person. Night student. Person, night student. Person. I, can, I can relate to that. <laughs> no, he, he, really, he really became a friend. And I mean, I okay. think you have a more interesting story to tell than me. Uh, his is very interesting. That's how he met his wife. Mm. And he was all strategic. He was your student, I mean. I mean, he was, was best up. I mean, you better yeah. tell your story. Yeah, hurry up, hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> I want to interview Mariana. She, 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 she was she was my junior. Uh, so what happened was that I was seniorring a, a leadership program. Coaching, so coaching. Was, okay. Yeah, I was coaching a leadership program, and she was one of the small group members. But it, yeah. Things happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> this story, yeah. But way, way, way after the course, and that was way yeah. after the course, yeah. and yeah. there was a long, long, long time ago. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's my story. <laughs> oh, and, and okay, um, okay. One of our cheeky okay, said, I feel better now. Yeah, yeah. Don't oh, worry yeah. about it. Story, right? Don't worry about yeah, it. it. It happens. happens. And look at one of our students. Can you? Oh, teaching student romance is classic love story. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. It's not a romance while you're teaching the student. It's many years yeah, exactly. later, of course. Years later. <laughs> you, you just meet in the school, you know, and you develop yes. a friendship. Yes. Yeah. Come on. Definitely. I'm a professional. I'm a professional. <laughs> exactly. I'm a professional. <laughs> okay. Love are. it. Okay, so today, um, yeah, please do not turn my life into any kind of a, a romantic <laughs> soap opera. Okay, I should be so lucky if my life was that interesting. It's not. It sounds like the next episode we need to do we cover a novel kind of thing. You don't know, no, just kidding. Yeah. Okay, anyway. So, and today, um, what? How do you work with your clients, and and what are the things that you do with them? You know, who have you worked with? Mm. Uh, in corporate, I've I've trained uh, all MNCs from banks, UOB, CIO. I mean, all the major banks, major pharmaceutical organizations, major uh, tech organizations, um, all over. Really, a lot of. Uh, I, I won't go into names, but. Um, Oh, okay. Uh, so you mostly, mostly MNCs, mostly MNCs. Okay. Yeah. And and what is it that you do with them? You basically coach them on, and these are professionals, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, and, yeah. And absolutely. What, what do you think is their main challenge? It, it really ranges. It ranges a lot because a lot of my work is in Singapore. Their challenges there are somewhat different or their focus is somewhat different. But basically in Asia, a lot of the issues are the same. It's um, it's areas of communication, like having the confidence to present is a big one, particularly mm -hmm. to present to top management, to be able mm -hmm. to organize your thoughts crisply, concisely, handle uh, impromptu questions, and you know the thing and speaking up to your boss um a lot of business writing a lot of proposal writing report writing um different areas of communication how to handle um how to handle disagreement how to handle issues how to give feedback um how to deal with difficult problems and a lot of the issues are not really language related they're actually really having the confidence to stand up and be able to say what you mean and not feel so self-conscious and self-aware that you end up speaking in circles and not being able to get your message. You see, clarity requires a clear head, right? Mm -hmm. And when we're nervous, when we're stressed, when we're worried about what the other person is thinking of, what's the first thing that goes is the clarity of your mind. And that's what causes all the you know, circular roundabout talking. That's why we see a lot of problems with junior level staff when they're presenting or speaking is not not speaking enough, it's 
it's never it's not knowing how to stop maneuver right yeah yeah, yeah. It is, because there's this constant feeling it's like this feeling that i haven't said it right i haven't said enough you know i have to say more i have to keep saying it so so the main issue is not language and i okay. discovered that you know i discovered that quite by accident oh okay well how did you discover that or do we talk about that later um well i can mention it if you want yeah yeah was this the video well, I, game no i mean i discovered it because when i was teaching i was brought into organizations who knew i was teaching english and and i wrote books about how to use english with confidence are using you know you, you my um english fast and easy books or english for the workplace um so organizations would bring me in and when i would be interviewed by the organization they would say to me my staff's english is no good they, they can you come and help them improve their english they're they're uh, i sorry i'm hearing so much back uh, um um is it, is it me or is it i'm just curious is it something i'm doing no. no okay there was so Sounds much good. feedback okay it stopped yeah. okay miraculously mm -hmm. it's as like as i spoke as, yeah and it and stopped then, uh, okay got answered so, 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 so i was getting called into these organizations and 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 the people bringing me in were saying we need you to come in their english is not good and i you know take notes tell me what you want to change what's the problem oh they they their grammar is not correct their vocabulary is small it was all language based so when i started going into these organizations i would actually be you know i would actually have that as an agenda but i very very quickly started to realize look you see some people that you know interestingly i mean their english is not great but man they can communicate well and then you see other people you know where they've got you know a higher level of english and they're the ones that are frozen like a codfish you know that can't mm -hmm. get the words out or that don't know how to organize what they're saying uh and very quickly i started to tweak the way i was teaching them and you know within a year or so i would i it, it just completely morphed i didn't focus on language in fact i go out of my way to stress stop mm -hmm. trying to improve your english stop trying to improve it stop it stop it i'm saying this to everybody stop it you know if you do the things that confident speakers do your english will naturally improve because you'll be getting out there and you'll be doing it so just get out there and do it it's good enough, good enough. for almost everybody it's good enough okay so, now i'm hearing echo okay but go on i mean i'm i'm curious to know what's causing us yeah. asians to have this and is there is, is there a reason for this based on your experience on it and what is it asian? only asians or is this an asian thing or is this yeah is it an asian, asian thing, thing? no is it it's an not asian thing no it's no it's a it, i mean I, i i have a group of people who come and from all over the world and we meet and we talk together this is my mm -hmm. my my it's not it's it's this is my club yeah. my global family Uh -huh. where I want to encourage people to speak more. We've got people from all over the world and from every country people are reluctant to come in and they worry that they're not going to understand, they worry. But I'll tell you, Malaysia has its own special sauce here. Really? Has its own oh, special sauce. Oh. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Maybe we can talk yeah, yo, yeah maybe, let's maybe talk about that. Like, what like, do you what, what is it what, what what makes us different? What's our problem? When you when say it special to... sauce, it's a good sauce, is it? Or is it's it a like a sauce? It's a great, it's a great, it's a great, it's it's a good and bad sauce. It's like everything. Okay. The good, the good part about it is you've got this incredible rojak, like you're borrowing from different languages and yes. you're mixing them all up like a big giant soup, you know. And uh -huh. it's beautiful and wonderful the way um, people speak here, you know, with a mm -hmm. one sentence can have three languages in it. Yes. Um, and, and the way that you play with language is so interesting. The way that the, the dynamics of how you decide which language to speak. I, I knew somebody, this is an interesting story. Somebody who was, um, a young 18 year old girl, Chinese, mm -hmm. 
Uh, she she was a mixed mixed um, um, Saleh mother, mm -hmm. okay, uh, and uh, Matsale mother and a Chinese father, and mm -hmm. she was working in an office at eighteen, and she had a superior who was Indian. The superior was had a less of a formal education, okay, and she only she, her first language was Tamil. And her second language was English. Okay, okay. so Tamil mm -hmm. one, then English, then Malay. Mm -hmm. My daughter's languages were Chinese and English, then Malay. No Tamil, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But what language do you think they use to communicate naturally? This is just Malay. kind of interesting. Malay. Yeah, Malay. But, but mm -hmm. why? If both, you tell me why, though, if both of them, their English was better than their Malay for both of them, why did they communicate in Malay? Because the confidence is there. And, and they feel like they're not judged or they can relate to each other better. There's some, it, it's That's a right. common it thing. It leveled the playing field. Yeah. It, it leveled yes, the playing yes, field, which is right. so interesting. So, so they chose that language because then the older one who was less educated didn't, wasn't at a disadvantage if yes. they had spoken English. So mm -hmm. isn't that interesting? Yeah. Like that's, it, that's, that's a beautiful Malaysian thing. Yes, it is. It is. It, it's so, so true. Like I find myself changing the way I speak depending on who I'm with um, and, and how they're comfortable because it, you're right. It levels the playing field because I have an accent and that scares a lot of people. So when, when I speak like Manglish or Malay, it helps. So you're, you're definitely right. Yeah. Isn't that, you know, what that yeah. really shows? And I'm just thinking of this right now. What it really shows is that more important than language is what it's used for. It's about the relationship, isn't it? Yes. You, yeah. you, you maneuver the language to, to, yeah. to create better relationship. That's what's important. Yeah. And, and that, that is essentially wrong. what language is about. I mean, think about it. When we first started, we couldn't speak. And then that language came as a form of us communicating so we can get closer to each other. And somewhere along the way, people became horrible and, and ridiculed people for speaking English wrongly, like that TV. I, I don't know when that oh. happened. Yeah. Okay, I, I'd like yeah. to ask you guys yes. that. And I would like to yeah. ask your, your, your listeners, viewers. too, if yes. you can comment. Uh -huh. Your viewers, yeah. sorry, if they can comment. I want to ask you, what is the evidence that her English was poor? You tell me. I want to know. You know, all the, the, the headlines talked about her bad English. I would like to know, what is your evidence that her English was poor? Okay. What are, um, I, want, I, I was trying to listen, but I couldn't. I think it was her accent. She, she, what, I don't remember her making much mistakes. She just wasn't fluent in speaking, but I could be wrong. I just saw it just like that. But I saw a lot of the comments. So I was reading more of the comments than, you know, whether her, her grammar was wrong or whether her, ex, her, her accent, you know, kind of thing. I mean, what do you have to say? I, I personally feel it's not the language, it's the confidence. Possible. When she's in front of the camera. Yeah. What yeah. about it's you just... guys who are tuning in? Was yeah. it yeah. her was yeah. it her grammar or was it what was so bad about her English? Was it her accent? Was it her grammar? Or was it her confidence? We've got Dr. Eric who says yes. And, I'm and if you say it was her English, I want to know what about it was not mm -hmm. adequate. That's what I'd like to know. Now, I'm not wearing my glasses. I took my glasses off, so and okay. I'm not putting them on. So okay. you'll have to tell me what they say in the comments. Okay, there's no comment right now <laughs> because I see this again. You guys are younger than me. I'm not wearing glasses. Oh, I'm not that young, trust me. Okay, hang on. Um, okay, this is one of our students saying, young 18-year-old Chinese. Are you referring to our co-founder, Pauline Chia? Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> Dr. Eric, who's a doctor, is saying yes. I'm scared. I'm scared to be to be eaten. Baham. Yeah, can I think? Scared to be Yeah, that's actually a, that's actually a good question to ask. What is it about her English that's yeah, such an issue? Because honestly, I was listening because there to was, it. I was, it wasn't an English problem. It you see, wasn't, this, wasn't. this is where people go to the language and say, it's, people, you know, it's it's the, the the problem is your English. It gets, it becomes a scapegoat for everything. Just like Isn't these, these yeah. organizations bringing me in saying the problem is their English. The problem was never their English. And that poor teacher, there was nothing wrong with her English. Her English was just fine. It wasn't. This mm -hmm. woman, you can tell, 
She was not given any time to prepare. I don't think she'd read, had a chance to read the monitor once. She would, yeah. and, and obviously someone had directed her to animate, you know, mm -hmm. to be animated mm -hmm. and not boring. So this poor woman was doing her best to mm -hmm. read the monitor for the first time. Which is time, hard. Which, which is, is hard, hard to read them. Yeah. And to try and, and know what she's talking about and, and put in all these gestures. I've seen her interviewed in real life in Malay, and she's a lovely, eloquent, calm speaker. She's not like that at all. Wow. And I, I okay. commend her. And I also commend her for after, you know, saying, yeah. if I were her, I would have stood up and said, you tell me, uh, what's wrong with my English? You tell me. <laughs> she yeah, yeah, yeah. She didn't. She was uh, said, um, I I want to improve. I own it yes, and yes. I would like to Amazing. Improve. Amazing. I love that I woman. I love that woman. Yeah. I, but if she's watching, I want to say yeah. mwah, mwah to, to you, you. You are so right. But when, when we were one of the reasons we invited you there was this heated debate in in our whatsapp group and one of our friends were like becoming a keyboard jihadist we call them um you know it's like no the england has to be good or something okay, i'm saying england because i'm so used to it but but i honestly couldn't hear what her accent i mean the grammar or whatever and i didn't see why she had to be pinned to a stake you know burned at the stake let's put it that way so yeah, yeah. you're right um it um you know it's it's a lot of pressure even me as a person who speaks english well when the first time i went on camera it was scary you know it's 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 a completely different ball game to read all these things you can't catch up because it moves so fast you know yeah. so for her to say that yay i want to improve that's amazing. Yeah. So Michelle is saying that it's easy to use language as an excuse. It happens in Japan a lot too. No matter how much we learn, we would never be good enough. Yeah, because we keep telling ourselves that we're not good enough, right? And I think that is the main problem. Is there, okay, uh, speaking about how you have your councils of elders with all these, um, you know, global speaking experts, um, is there anything which is unique about Malaysia that that stops us from speaking compared to other countries? Or, or yes, is there, there any is. where we have strength? What is it? Yeah. Okay. So because Malaysia was British educated two generations mm -hmm. ago, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. still this sort of leftover mentality uh, that British English and the old British English, the way that the British introduced English in Malaysia is the right way to speak. Now, if you think about it, the British who were here running the education system, how many years ago was that? 70 years ago, 60 years About ago? 60 plus years ago, yeah. Okay, yeah. and more. So the, so the the school of thought, the, the teaching at that time, what was that like world over? First of all, it was a very different world. It was a world where English is owned by England, by 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 mm. Britain. Britain is the main owners, you know, Canada, mm -hmm. we, we borrow it, but we mm -hmm. don't get it quite right. England owns English. Mm -hmm. And also back in those days, you know, every language, the way they taught language, they were sticklers for um, mastering, mastering it. Uh, in in detail, it's like the way you know my mother used to learn Latin when she was little. Uh, the way you know, probably mm -hmm. the way Chinese used to learn the old style Chinese. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. it, it 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 wasn't uh, user friendly. It was mm -hmm. more of an art, learning the art of language. Mm -hmm. Now you know we still see people when they're writing their emails saying things like should you require further clarification kindly do not hesitate to contact who that who speaks like that where does that come from that we speak where does it come from that malaysians who can't really feel comfortable saying hi how are you are writing sentences like kindly be reminded you know it, this is all left over from a long long time ago so that was the benchmark, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's this trickle down effect. So teachers mm -hmm. who learn to teach, you know, learn English to teach English, they learn from those people. The next right. generation learns from those people. And that's why we're still caught in two worlds. There's one that English is just a tool, like I say in my TEDx. Yes. Uh -huh. It's a tool, that's all, a tool. Uh -huh. 
And it's the tool of the world. It's not the tool of native speakers anymore at all. Exactly. We are, yeah. we are this many speakers. It's the tool of the world to, to get along. So there's that. And then we're trying to combine it with this old English idea that it's very important to know present perfect continuous tense. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. my, my husband, my ex-husband, uh, can I tell you a story about him? Funny story. Yes, to yeah, give please. Perfect example. Yeah. So my ex-husband, he, he's, he's Malaysian, but he was very, um, uh, didn't have any formal education and did never, you know, he, he, when I, when I first met him and I was a teacher, you know, we, we would go to the, we would go to a supermarket, right? Or we go, we would go to a shopping mall and he would go to his boy stores and I would go to my girl stores and we would arrange to meet at McDonald's. And then I'd get to McDonald's or I'd get a phone call on my little old Nokia. Remember the old Nokias? Oh yeah. The ones yeah. that if you put in a washing machine, it still lives. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. The little purple guy was so cute. It was and, so and I'd get a message from my husband that would say, um, it would say like, uh, uh, at McD, I wait you 20 min. I so wait you. So, so I would not know, right? What does he mean? Now you tell me, and I'd like your, actually your viewers tell me. Does okay, he mean, tell us. does he mean A, I, I've been waiting here for 20 minutes? Or does he mean I'm just getting to McDonald's now and I'm going to wait for 20 minutes? Or does he mean in 20 minutes from now, I'll go to McDonald's? What, what does that the mean? message again? Uh, what was okay, the message so again? Uh -huh. Okay, at McD, I wait you 20 min. I wait <laughs> you 20 min. He, okay, okay, this is what I think he's saying. He's at yeah. McD and he'll wait for you for 20 minutes. What do you guys think? Let us know. I okay, well, I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I want to see what the view what your viewers say. Because okay. I notice it differs depending on where in Malaysia you live. In Penang, okay. you'll say something very different. For okay, you. so Marcus Fuya, who we call Ik Fuyong, uh, says, I'll see you at MACD in 20 minutes. Oh, Sam is saying, I'll see you at MACD in 20 minutes. Our, our popcorn chatbot, who has a life of its own, says that uh, he waited for 20 minutes for you at MACD. Okay, and then Haniza, Haniza is saying, I have been waiting 20 minutes. And then CY is saying he waited for you 20 minutes. And then Jeffrey is saying, see you in 20 minutes. No, I'll be in there in 20 minutes. Oh my God, so many different. I so sad. Yeah, I'm, and now I'm confused. Okay, so now what was the right answer? Well, so, so I would say to him, I would say, honey, you need grammar. I'd say, come on. You need grammar. You have to either say, "I." this was in my grammar days when I was a teacher, right? A long time ago. I have been waiting for 20 minutes. Or you have to say, I, I will wait. Or you have to say, into, and my husband would go like, ah, okay, 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 okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Which means I'm not listening, right? So then next time we'd go, I'd get the message again. And the, the next time the message would just say, at McD, already wait 20 min. So how? <laughs> you know, like that, that's all. So so he would get the message across, but he would never use grammar. But he would get the message across to me. Ah right, okay. April right. is so cute. This I'm at MACD waiting for you for twenty minutes already. Hi y'all. <laughs> that's April, what April, April, April. Yeah. April. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Popcorn AI wants to know: Did you both end up fighting? Was this the start of the not so? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Okay, that's oh, another goodness. show, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's Jerry Springer. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Popcorn oh, AI is like, ha, 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 ha. I told you. <laughs> we bought it cheap from China. That's what happened. But anyway, yes. Um, England, Canada, America is clearly divided by a common language. <laughs> Jane, yeah, so true. <laughs> yeah, so Jane does virtual Heritage KL tours. So when you're in KL, let us know. We'll get her to take you out. <laughs> oh, I'd love that. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. so you'll get a different perspective of the culture since you're intercultural uh, specialist, right? Communication oh, specialist. Okay, Jane, Jane, contact okay. me on LinkedIn, okay? Don't Yeah, don't LinkedIn, forget. LinkedIn. Got that, Jane? Uh, we're just selling her. Okay, anyway, um, I mean, any other questions? Okay, I have a question. So, so why? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I mean, go. Uh, why, do you no, think go ahead, go why do you think your TEDx was so popular? Uh, you know, 70, uh, top 70 in the world, you know, top kind of thing. Top 50 now, top 50 oh, now. top 50. Is there like a chart that we don't yeah, know? There is. There <laughs> is. Really? 
yeah. to all the TEDx speakers. Because you know, on LinkedIn, we see TEDx speaker, TEDx speaker, TEDx speaker. But are you top 50? I don't think so. You're not even in the chart. Okay, just saying. <laughs> so how, how, why do you think it's so popular? Um, I think it, 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 it's popular because it it hits a, a nerve that's common. You see, I mean, think about it uh, all over the world. English is still taught like mm -hmm. uh, an art to master. It's still mm. taught, you know, I mean, and, and, and I can't we can't blame teachers. You know, educational institutes are like giant big elephants. They're very slow to change. And still in high school, how do you measure students? You have to quantify, you know, you have to quantify them to be able to grade them. And if you have 50 kids in a class, you can't rate them on how clearly they get the message across. How do you, how do you measure that? So they have to rate them on, you know, tick, 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 mm. no, not wrong, tick, tick. So because it's still taught that way, there are so many people coming into the working world and they're, they've, they're stuck in this school mindset where they believe they're going to get, you know, yeah. it's going to be noticed if they make a mistake. And the, and the truth is that I'm looking at everybody here right now and I'm telling you from my heart, this is what my new online uh, program is for. But we'll, we'll talk about that later. But I made it especially for this. And I'm telling you right now. Uh, when you get into the working world, people are not interested in your little grammatical mistakes. People want to know your value. They want to know what you can do for them. That's what they care about. You are the only one that's noticing. People want more from you, more from you. So step up and give more. Let the English thing be, be you know, Really, it just makes me crazy because you can see really, um, I went to see a lawyer <laughs> recently. I saw this lawyer, you know. Now, this lawyer just came back from Australia, okay? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. he was, his English was excellent, right? Excellent, because mm -hmm. he lived in Australia. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to him about my will. I had to make mm -hmm. some changes in my will. So this guy with, you know, very, very good English, he keeps saying to me, you know, okay, uh, so uh, when you die, uh, when you die, uh, we call your daughter and we, and when you die, uh, and he keeps telling me when you die, and I'm, just, I'm getting more and more depressed. I'm like, I want to I know, I thought so. Daughter. Okay, so I leave him and then I go to another lawyer who's, who's a Malaysian guy whose English is at a, a quite a low level, actually. Like he wasn't, he, he wasn't that fluent, but that guy had the art. That guy said to me, Okay, so uh, if uh, if something happened to you, uh, okay, not saying, I think lightly Noah, but if something happened, I'm thinking, that's the guy I want, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. That's the one I want. Don't give me this when, you know, when, when you're you dead. Die. Die. And then mm. the, the dying comes out like 10, every, 10 <laughs> deaths per, per minute, right? <laughs> per second. Exactly. So, right. so it's really not language. It's like it's the skill of connecting and getting a message across. And that means you need to focus on the other person. So you have to get the focus off of yourself. Okay, Krishna wow. is saying don't die. Uh, <laughs> Sharon is still at MACD. She waited 20 minutes. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, hang on. Okay. So is it Malaysia who only has this legacy of, you know, the two generations ago British and then therefore we are caught in this world of, you know, like you've got this school of, oh, you need to be perfect English and, and then you've got the people who are like Manglish, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So just so to, is this another version? Is this another global pandemic? It's, it's not the COVID pandemic, but it's the English pandemic. Yeah. Or is it well, you, yeah. you, you see it in, in, country, in countries that were colonized, like India. India, India has it too. Oh yeah, and in India, you know, they 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 they're in in English educated, but they still have this this kind of idea of British English mm. and what the language is supposed to be like. One mm. of the one of the young women on my global group where we meet. Uh, she always says to me, can you correct my mistakes? You know, every time we, all she wants is mistakes corrected. And, I, and it drives me absolutely crazy. I'm not in the least bit interested in her mistakes. I want to know who she is, what she's got yeah. to bring to the table. Yeah. And and I think mm -hmm. 
that is one of the reasons why it paralyzes us because we are so focusing and caught up in the mistakes that we make. We attract more mistakes and we make more mistakes rather than focusing on the present, which is where people want us to be, right? What they want mm -hmm. us to be. The, Absolutely. The, in the present. Okay. Absolutely. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Where, where, where did we go wrong? What is it that we do that's causing all of this? Okay, you see, I'm in right now. When you're saying where did we go wrong, you're at, you're actually actually yeah, exactly, exactly. focusing exactly. on the focusing problem, focusing on where we went. There's nothing we did wrong. First of all, the British mm -hmm. did it wrong. They came in here and blamed, <laughs> and, you know, okay, blame them if you want to blame someone. Um, okay, but, I can't. Blame, yeah. I want to blame them because I went to England, and yeah, English also sucks. Okay. <laughs> They're yeah, not good. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Come on. Exactly. And, and and like they come to me, an Asian, and they get insecure because I get all the right answers. I'm like, why is your England like that? You know, of course yeah. I said English at that point. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So wow. exactly. You know, so yeah. so we have to stop thinking about we went wrong. There's nothing wrong in the first place. There is nothing wrong. There's mm. nothing wrong. Like it's all up here. It's all up here. Mm. All up here. I love that. I, I love swear that. to you. And I've gone into workshops, these two-day corporate workshops, where mm -hmm. where I've changed them in two days. They come in and they they they're scared to even open their mouths to me because they think I'm going to be noticing everything wrong with them, and and they're paralyzed. And in two days, they're drastically changed. And they can't wow. believe how well they speak. They haven't improved their English. I didn't no, go in and they, improve their English. They changed, changed their mindset, right? Mindset. Absolutely. And what a okay. difference. What a yeah, difference. Yeah. Jane is saying the Africans. I'm echoing. Uh, the Africans, too, had a situation like Manglish? South Africa? South Africa? Uh, yeah. South did Africa they, is, they, South they had that same problem? I, I don't know. Uh, I'm only familiar really with like Afrikaans, South Africans, and mm -hmm. of course they're native English speaking. They're like any other English, native right. English okay. country. I mean, they, the Afri Afrikaans is their first language, but uh, but other Africans I'm not that familiar with, but I don't know. I listen to BBC World Service a lot, and that's, um, I guess that's a pretty stupid thing to say. That doesn't mean anything. That's radio. Um, okay. I don't know. It's the short answer. Okay. I don't know. Okay. And Abzan is saying the British did it wrong. She loves that. Ha ha ha. That's what so, she's saying. Yeah. You know, when what? I first came to what? Malaysia, I was teaching at the British Council uh -huh. and my, uh -huh. my pronunciation was corrected, you know, and, uh -huh. and it really bothered me. You uh -huh. know, they, I, I was yeah, saying something you're, about. You're, you're Canadian, Canadian, right? So you're considered like wrong English, I guess they would say, Absolutely. right? The pronunciation. Yeah. I was saying advertisement and she came and said, it's not advertisement, it's advertisement. So, so, you know. I love that. <laughs> advertisement, yeah, they're, they're a bit constipated, I have to say, but I love it because I was there for a couple of years, right? And that was like so amazing to, to, to see and to, to be, to, to know whatever I thought was right when I was brought up here and to see it there that they can't speak English either. And they actually sound like Indians, especially if you go to Scotland, you know, they go like one bound and you're like, where am I, you know? So well, I it, it was we, an we eye opener. Stop, we need to stop sort of judging who speaks English and who doesn't in the first place. You know, like mm -hmm. there, there's nothing, yeah. nothing that the British did wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the timing, they were here and, you know, it's probably a great thing they came and, you know, changed the education system because, you know, a lot of people have grandparents that were English educated and that's yep. helped them in many ways. So there's no good or no bad. It's, yeah. I think it's nowadays it it's a matter of getting over judging it all so much. Yeah. I, you I know what so. was profound from this conversation is that you're right. We, we have this tendency to look for things that's wrong. Yeah. yeah. When Definitely. things are just... There's nothing wrong with it, actually. Okay. This <laughs> yeah, is our own perception right. of things, right? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I guess our biggest challenge is the fact that we're judging, and, and it's definitely a mindset thing, right? It, it's mm. never the language. Uh, you know, does the language get in the way? Do we ever, do people have trouble? I speak Malay. Saya cakap bahasa Malayo. Saya jika saya cakap bahasa Malayo, banyak kare saya tak tahu cakap apa. Saya fikir saya, you know, I. how many times do I go into a coffee shop and I say, kurang minyak? And they say, no, manis. You know, it happens to me all the time. 
You know, uh, you know something? Yeah, I get it wrong. I've made, I've had, I've had an entire restaurant laughing at me because I made a mistake in Malay. Like the whole you know, I, restaurant. I, I just, yeah. I just realized something. Yeah, what? If it's a Masali speaking Malay. Oh, they're kind. They're very kind. They if you kind. make a mistake. Malaysians yeah, are very okay. kind. They're yeah. very nice. Yeah. yeah but, but when, 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 when we a Malaysian we makes a mistake or when a Malaysian suddenly has an accent, they give you hell. Either way, you cannot be, you cannot have a fantastic accent. They will kill you for it. You cannot right. have, you cannot have a very bad accent. They will still kill you at it. So I don't know what the, the F they want. You're absolutely right. I mean, kids who are good in English get shamed at school. And who yeah. do you think you are, right? You are, you think yeah. you're so, yeah. I would probably say, I'm oh, wow. a coconut. Yeah. I'm like dark on the outside, but I'm white. And you, you got that right. Yeah. So I guess. Okay. <laughs> okay anyway. So how, how 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 can we encourage more people to just be comfortable, and just you know just yes. do it? I think the only way to do it, especially with our children, it, first of all, what I worry about is the next generation. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the problems that I see here in Johor is that parents of children. Uh, set completely the wrong example. You know, parent. I see so many parents pushing their children to learn English when the parents themselves are shy and won't speak. So, if you're a parent out there, I want to. I want to say the best thing you can do is set an example to your children by, with whatever English level you have, speaking and finding a way to get your point across, and 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 not not being in the least bit concerned about whether you're making mistakes or not if you if your kids see you do that they also will model it mm. and then um i i don't know really how to solve it quickly because it's such an ingrained mindset but i know it's our personal responsibility to decide where are you i think focus is a big part of it in my training what i do is i teach people how to change their focus so that they're so focused on what the other person needs and you know, get it, getting clarity and building the relationship, they don't have any energy to focus on themselves. A lot, wow. it, it all comes from too much focus this way when people okay. are speaking. Okay, so if we were to kind of, if, if we were to have a solution to this, what is the secret to confidence? I mean, is, is there any steps that you could share that can immediately help us um, you know, when we're trying to communicate? Well, I think I think what I just said is probably the number one uh -huh. uh, differentiator. Uh, mm -hmm. What the difference between the people who communicate well mm -hmm. and with confidence mm -hmm. are the ones whose focus is on the other person mm -hmm. and the message okay. they want to give, and that's all. Okay. I would say okay. if you can just train yourself to do that one thing you know, then there's a ripple effect because when that happens, what people notice is that the way other people treat them is much, it, look, if you're uncomfortable in a conversation, you're making the other person uncomfortable too. If you're comfortable, they're comfortable, they like you more because you, you they can see you're relaxed and then you get more friends and you get a bigger network and then the, then there's like a ripple effect and it happens very quickly, the improvement, very, mm. very quickly. Actually, you're right. I think that completely shifts the energy because the focus is on other people and therefore those people, I think somewhat subconsciously picks it up and, and wants to help them as well and they become less judgmental. I, I think so. Yeah? What, what do you That's, think, I mean? Yeah. I, I personally feel that the power of focusing out it's not yes. just about language, but in everything that you do. Yes. Right. Because um, it's the same with yeah. us and, and our students in, in helping them speak up, whether it's writing or, you know, giving a speech or going on, on video and speaking up or having a show and speaking up. Um, a lot mm -hmm. of the problem comes from us focusing in, oh, my God, these people are going to think I'm stupid. Oh, my God, these people are going to judge me. Da, da, da. But the, the fact of the matter is you've got to think about serving the audience what is it that they want what problems are you solving for people the, the focus is like right. what you say is outwards yeah it's amazing and, and we're, we're all there's no one that's um that doesn't worry about that i have it just like everybody else everybody does mm -hmm. it's never something we solve i think it's a lifelong no. it's yeah. like a habit it's trying to catch yourself yeah. right yes. would you agree with that? Yes. catching yes. yourself yeah. in the moment and saying oh i'm a little bit self-focused here get yeah. off me and so get on I, 
at popcorn we always say oh are you being constipated so tila here is saying when you think too much you become constipated <laughs> we don't know how else to explain it but everybody gets well, it when we say constipated well, yeah. when you focus in it's constipated you you become constipated yeah. because everything is inside you right <laughs> that's what happens <laughs> good point oh Yeah, so I was saying I started improving my English yeah. a lot when I was going after a girl from another school who only spoke English. Talk about motivation. Actually, that is pretty true. That's a good that's motivation. Another, that's, that's an example of focusing out, actually, if you take a look at it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> oh, wow. the power of love, he says. <laughs> wow. Oh, Krishna also guilty. Wow, now we know. We just put hot girl in front. We know they will suddenly improve their their. Speaking ability. Okay, sounds good. Um, okay, I have another question because you are an amazing speaker. Your TEDx mm. is not just top fifty, but you, you that 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 talk, the English uh, English local English went viral, and and you know you're one of the top fourteen speakers in the world, right? Um, kind of thing. So, what do you think is the secret in 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 giving that amazing kick ass speech? I, can yeah. I also add to that? Yes. Uh, just, just to add to that question, it's also I also realize your transformation from the first video that is, you, you remember the, the the video that we showed just now right, and your right. TEDx video. It's like two different person. You you yeah. you are more relaxed. You're more confident now. Yeah. Right. Uh, so what's your secret to this? I'm curious yeah. to know. I don't know. I I I I don't think I, if there were a secret, maybe it would be too easy, right? Maybe it's not a secret. It's just. Constant practice. I know. I know what's changed in me. One thing that's changed is the breathing. Like, mm -hmm. but and I think you know, it's again a, uh, having a level of calm. But it's also structuring your words. You know, it's you get a mastery of how to structure a talk, uh, how to pace yourself. Uh, you know, there's so many dimensions to it, from the the building of the talk to the timing of the talk to the delivery of it to the presence you know so there i don't think there's a secret it's okay so it it It, it comes with practice, right? And also, you learn. It, it is something that you learn and you improve along the way. It's an art, right? You you improve the skills. Yeah, but um, actually, yeah. It, interestingly, there is a common element to what we were talking about early, and that is uh -huh. audience awareness. When you start out and you're speaking and you're presenting, again, the focus is all on you, uh -huh. right? And when I did that 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 um, Toastmaster speech, that one that uh -huh. we just watched. Yeah, I was nervous up there. I was nervous. And okay. what is nervous? It's, it's a lot of focus on me. But mm -hmm. as I got older and better yeah. and wiser, mm -hmm. then I can focus more on, on the people out there too. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because mm -hmm. speaking is like performing in a way, I, I find. because And that's what I love about public speaking because you can kind of gauge your audience and you have that beautiful interaction of where you give and they give back and you can play with that. Which I find kind of missing on video, uh, because you, mm -hmm. you don't get that. So that was one of the tougher part for me when I was transitioning to TV or to video. I find how, how do you? What's your advice for people on on that? You know, kind of thing. I I, I on what actually? Um, on on speaking on transitioning to camera or you know on shifting and improving your skills. What advice would you give? I guess. I don't know. You'd probably be a, be a, 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 as much or a better expert than me on that. I know I use some of the skills that I used when I was an actor in Canada. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, you probably have great. And so I'll, I'll ask you the same question. What would you say? <laughs> I would say, well, definitely. That's a you, coach doing her work. Yeah, <laughs> I, would, doing work. <laughs> I would say probably. Just langar it first, and then along the way, you figure things out and you get more comfortable. And it's exactly like what you said. It's the focus is not here. It's on okay, how can I make it better so that they get the message and stuff like that. So right. you're right. The focus. And is then, what about there. you? What would you say? Mm. I would say, you know what? Uh, just focus out. Just like what you say, focus out, mm. and just just focus on really creating value. Um, yeah. This is something that I also learned throughout the years as well. Because I'm, I know what I'm lacking, but mm. if I focus too much on that, uh, I will never be able to pronounce "ang" properly. That's something that I just surrendered to that. I didn't know that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I my "ang" will be like it sounds weird, right? Uh, I speak I speak fast sometimes, mm. but what helped me is that I just focus on 
creating value, focus on the person. So when you are in my space, you will grow. That's that's my only intention. So when I'm, I'm with, with people, you are here with me, you're in the C spot. That's it. That's how we work. <laughs> yeah. Inch, it's yeah. Inch. That was my daughter who just came in. Do you want to say hi, oh, Ready? Hey, hi. Hey. Say hi. Hello. Do you want to come say hi? She's so cool. Okay, she got, clearly does not. Yeah, okay. I mean, has the French R. Okay. Well, we yeah, so are we've at established the five. three of us. I mean, sorry, I didn't get you to. So we've all established, I mean, uh, Nina and I, we've all established that the key to life is. Yes. What did you say? I mean, you said it in a nice way. Focus, Focus out. out. Yeah. Focus out. Focus out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, okay. Um, we are at ten zero five. We have ten minutes with you because we got to let you go. You have something else at ten thirty, right? Is it? I do. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so very and quickly, you if can. you guys have any questions, let us know. But I mean, if you were to, um, what's the biggest learning for you from today? Oh, do you have any rapid fire questions? Um. Yeah. You. You. You can do the rapid oh, fire. Oh no! Want. Actually, you. Uh, what's next for you, Mariana? I would love to mm. talk about that. And and we have a video oh. to show, right? I mean, did we show a video? Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. Yeah, so I show the video do you first? want us to show the video first? Or, and then we'll talk about it. Yeah? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Okay. So this is so what's happening. Check this out. What is the number one thing that prevents you from speaking up in English with confidence? With nearly 26 million fans across the world, Marina Pascal created Show Up to help you and organizations to empower their employees who need greater confidence, greater personal power, so that they can achieve better success, better collaboration, and have more influence. What is your real reason for wanting to speak English? The world has changed. You want to expand our world. You have enough English to create the result you want. You already have everything it takes to succeed. Own it and love it, and everybody else will. And if you live in this world of what English really is, I tell you, the world is a much friendlier place and the people in it are much more like your family. Step forward into the world and into all the possibilities that go along with it. All you have to do is show up. That is such that, a cool video. That, that is such <laughs> a powerful video. Um, Thank yeah, you. That's so my you, partner who did that. Wow. Okay. So this wow. is already available. Yes, it is. It, we we we've just released it very recently. I'm so proud of this. We've worked on this for a year. We wanted to do all the people who wrote to me after the TEDx, and they said, mm -hmm. you know, we love the message, but now how do we how do we become <laughs> that person, how do we make the transition? And I can't be there to train everybody. So we did it right. online. It's a one hour session. It's really, really good. In one hour, you sit there and you apply it to yourself and you investigate what it is that's preventing you from speaking with confidence and you turn around that mindset in an hour. So I want, I, I'm, I, I think it's so powerful. We've had great feedback from it. Can we, can we give them the link in case anybody's interested? Yeah, um, we've yeah. got the link. Popcorn AI, could you help us by sharing the link? Yeah, everybody's saying it's an awesome video, great video. Um, Samantha is saying that she misses you from the TEDx Penang Day, Ian Winston. Um, yeah. yeah. So guys, uh, if you can do us a favor I'm and Mariana as well, um, if you guys could share the links to your friends, your family, because it's just a one hour kind of thing and you get to go back and investigate what are the things that's holding you back, yeah? Yeah, um, so it's, it's very powerful. Yeah, yeah. Very pow and, and you have a workbook too that you can do right on your monitor, like a, a PDF workbook. So you're you're watching and you're writing and you're watching and you're writing, and it's it's yeah. 
yeah wonderful okay cool so if you guys want to share it on your social media you you know feel free to message me or mariana and and uh we'll send you the links and stuff like that but popcorn ai has also shared it here on the comment section so feel did you free share to the use think it. of it link um yes um there's a whole write-up on this so they can copy it it's it's including the burp the blurbs but is yeah. it, do you have the Thinkific link there? Because that's yeah. the link um, at okay. the bottom. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah please oh. share it, everybody. I would be so honored because we just put it out just just last week. It's brand new. Wow. And, um, okay. Yeah. Last month. I mean, and I would love um, to get your feedback on it. Let me know. Let me know what you like. Let me know if there's anything you don't like, and uh, share it, please. I would okay. be honored. Be honored okay. for my uh, there is one question which I'm gonna take quickly. How can we encourage our kids to speak English with proper pronunciation and enunciation oh. without scaring the F out of them? Sorry, you didn't say okay. F, I did. And how do we encourage reading uh, for kids? Okay, to make Chiano, it Chiano Chu, look, look me in the eyes, Chiano. I'm looking at you, Chiano. I'm looking at you. Leave your children alone, okay? I'm sorry to say that, but I want to say stop trying to get them to speak with what is perfect pronunciation? Is it advertisement or is it advertisement? Or is it Malaysian or Singaporean advertisement? What is it? There is no perfect pronunciation. Leave them alone because the more you focus on making them perfect, the more they're going to be self-conscious and paralyzed with fear. Let them go and let them feel free to express themselves with whatever their pronunciation sounds like. That's how uh, to get them to improve. Wow. I'm going to I'm going to kecek kecek Melayu sekejap. Uh, untuk orang Melayu yang selalu hentam orang. Okey. Hmm. Mak Sadeh hmm. pun dah cakap selamba je. So janganlah tolonglah berhentikan kutuk orang ni, okey. Did you get that, Mariana? <laughs> yeah, you can betul, you can check up betul betul. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, kind of thing, and um, it's the same way uh, uh, for the people who speak fantastic English. Stop dissing the ones who are learning. Give them that space to make mistakes. Yeah. You, you weren't perfect from the start, so chill. You know, back off. Saya and cakap it... bahasa Malayu, tak orang tak cakap saya tak betul. Orang ah. mau uh, orang mau tahu uh, mau faham apa saya cakap. Saya tak perlu fikir betul tak betul. Jika saya fikir saya tak saya takut. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love and it. You, and you you learned this because of your first toilet experience. Oh, my toilet experience. I knew you'd want to end. We, we don't have yeah, time I for could, the toilet experience. Right? Do you have time to quickly make it? Uh, you know, yeah, let's wrap it up with that. Yeah, <laughs> with the toilet experience. You want me to leave? You want my, the last thing people remember about me? With the <laughs> no. <laughs> cruel people. If other people want to hear it, I'll tell it. But maybe Okay, do you guys want to hear the toilet, toilet story? Come on, come on, guys. We don't have time. We've got two minutes from uh, Mariana. So I don't think they want the toilet story. <laughs> No, they're, they're just delayed, kind of thing. Okay, so we're, we're probably going to have to interview her with the toilet story later on and get her to come we back. Be, yes. <laughs> All right, I'll, you, I'll, I'll give you the toilet story. You want the toilet yes. story? Yes, yes, we want. Okay. Everybody wants the toilet story. I told you that All two right. minutes delayed. <laughs> so, I, so it's my first day in Malaysia, and I'm in a restaurant, and mm -hmm. uh, it's a Malay restaurant, and I order nasi lemak, and I don't know anything about nasi lemak. I just order it. And I say, no rice, please. No rice. So they, they bring me a boiled egg and they bring me ikan bilis and sambal. And that's it. So I eat it all and I immediately have to go to the bathroom. So I go to the bathroom and it's a hole. So I think, I've never seen a hole. I think they've taken the toilet for repair. So I go to the next cubicle and it's a hole. So I go to the next cubicle and it's a hole. And I don't know what to do. And then I see a woman going into the one cubicle. So I think I'll go into the hole. I go in, I close the door and I'm looking around and I don't know where the toilet paper is. So I ask the woman in the next cubicle for toilet paper. And she says, I don't have, but she says to me, you see bucket inside? And I look and I see this bucket of water. I said, yeah. And she says, inside your bucket, you got pail? I said, yeah. She said, you use the bucket and the pail. I said, okay. So I'm looking at the bucket 
full of water and I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with the bucket of water. And then I suddenly realize, of course, they take the toilet away for repair and they give you in replacement a bucket of water. So I sit on the bucket and I go shooting. And that was my first day in Malaysia. And I'm so sorry to the person who went in after me into that cubicle. <laughs> okay. So how does that link to, to English? It doesn't. How did you figure okay. it? <laughs> the, point, okay. the point is you, you learn by doing, right? You don't do anything yes. perfectly. You just do it. Okay, I have one question. How did you figure out what you did was wrong? Oh, you know how I was yeah. at the Puderaya yeah. bus station. Remember the old uh -huh. Puderaya yeah. bus station? Yeah. In KL? Which was a nightmare if it's 25 Which years ago. Nightmare. Even I don't go there, okay? No, it was a nightmare. And I was in the toilet and it was packed full of women. And I opened the cubicle door and I saw this old Malay woman and she was squatting down. And I suddenly realized, <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> How, how many how many weeks or how many days was this after? <laughs> no, no, the truth is, okay, this is so embarrassing. I can't believe I'm t this better not be on like forever, right? You better like burn this thing up. I, I, I realized that I wasn't supposed to pee in the bucket pretty quickly, but I didn't know I was supposed to squat. So I just stood there, you know, and she standing up. So I didn't know you were supposed to squat down. That okay. I learned from the woman in the. Oh, in the squat okay. Table. Look yeah. At, now at, I, then at, I understood. That's why my shoes are always wet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Angela, Angela's German, by the way. She's been here. I don't know how many years, and she's like, like that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, the England was not um, clear. Okay. Thank you so much. We are thank so much, Rona. I had so much fun. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you, thank Lovely you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Good night. Yeah, we're going to continue. Night. Yeah. Right. Best of luck to everybody. Thank Best you. Best of luck to you as well. All right, Bye. thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh, that was fun. That okay. was super fun. Hang on now. Okay, cool. So, um, so <laughs> before we go off, what's happening next on PopCon? <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. So uh, this Saturday, let's talk about this Saturday first, all right? Okay. Mm. I thought you were going to talk. Hello. Yes, I'm Oh, here. okay. Right. Guys, so this Saturday, we are having our webinar, right, on how to use LinkedIn to get clients. So please sign up for this ASAP. Uh, th uh, seats are limited. And then the week after that, which is next Saturday, what's happening next Saturday, Nina? Oh, next Saturday is we're going to have Samantha Tang. Where are you? Munchy, Munchy Tang. You know, right. we're going to have Samantha Tang, who's, who is the chapter lead of Google Business Group of GBG and Women Will Penang. And she is going to share with you how you can elevate your business game with Google My Business. Okay. So Popcorn AI uh, chatbot has got the links all here. So if you want to sign up for any of this, we don't have our classes often. So when we do have our classes, you definitely want to sign up. Okay. And exactly. it's very limited seat. So first come, first serve, we are already 50% uh, to 60%. So this is Samantha. So, you know, Lots of stuff that we're going to be sharing. So please, please, please do join us. Uh, kind of thing. Or if you think you can benefit somebody else, please share the links with them. Thank you so exactly. much. Angela is saying that I was lucky to know those toilets from Paris. Ooh, Paris has that same toilet. I didn't know. I mean, we are French. This is awesome. We are. <laughs> okay. Pop guys, by the way, uh, yes, uh, by the we way, guys, talk join. about next month. Oh, yeah. What was it you want to talk about next month, right? We're not going to be around next month. Just Langa is taking a break exactly. for one whole month. So just Langa is taking a break, guys. Uh, we are re-strategizing. We are, uh, we are, season three is coming up. So yep. uh, before we leave, uh, thank you so much for being with us for the last 52 episodes. Uh, yep. We're going to go for our Hagaya break. Uh, Selamat Hari Raya to everyone. Right. Yep. That's so why we're taking uh, one month. And also, hopefully, we're going to come back bigger and better than ever. If you have people that you want us to interview, if you have certain um, topics that you want us to cover, let us know in the comment section. While Egg Fu Yong is saying, Slamat Hari Raya. Thank you. Italians, two head squat toilets. Ah, please. We are so ahead of our time. Uh, squat toilets. I actually think squat toilets are awesome. It's hygienic. 
you know, Western yep. silence is like, Ugh, you know, um, kind of thing. <laughs> if you're traveling, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, hope you had a good time. Thank you so much. Um, please join us. We'll see you soon at the Saturday class. But if we don't see you, um, want to wish you a very selamat hari raya. Ma'af zahir batin. Ma'af zahir batin. Kosong, kosong. Kosong, kosong. Yeah. Okay. Kosong, kosong. Okay. And then if we say anything wrong, we minta maaf next raya pula. Okay. <laughs> okay. And with okay. that, have a good night, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see yeah. you again one month from now. If you missed us, right, come to the other Facebook group. Yes, okay, because we'll we will still be, be there every Monday. We are still going to be there every Monday, but just Langa is taking a break for the next one month. Exactly. We just Coming don't know what, what we're talking about on uh, the following Monday, but we're definitely going to be there. Okay. So thank yeah, you so gonna... much, guys. We love you. We had fun. Let us know what kind of topics you want. And yes, we'll be seeing you really, really soon on Saturday right. and then on Monday. Okay. See you soon. Okay. So Bye. before we end this, I'm going to show the Mariana video again. Oh, yes. Uh, please show the Mariana video. Um, right. Join the, yeah. uh, uh, Join the class. Mariana. Join the class. We'll do whatever we want to do. We'll yeah. see you again. Bye. Walk on signing off. Bye. What is the number one thing that prevents you from speaking up in English with confidence? With nearly 26 million fans across the world, Marina Pascal created Show Up to help you and organizations to empower their employees who need greater confidence, greater personal power so that they can achieve better success, better collaboration, and have more influence. What is your real reason for wanting to speak English? The world has changed. We want to expand our world. You have enough English to create the result you want. You already have everything it takes to succeed. Own it. I love it, and everybody else will. And if you live in this world of what English really is, I tell you, the world is a much friendlier place, and the people in it are much more like your family. Step forward into the world and into all the possibilities that go along with it. All you have to do is show up. Ba -ba -ba -ba